Hello again. In this video and the next one, I'll be explaining linear regression and multiple linear regression. The idea of regression, as we mentioned before, is to try and predict a real value or a numeric value. And for linear regression, it's uh, all about line fitting or fitting a line to a number of points that we have or finding the line of the best fit. Now, if we have only one input variable or only one predictor one feature then it becomes or it's called simple linear regression and as you can see here we have only one input variable and that's the output variable and we try to find the line of best fit that's uh, simple linear regression but in this video and the next one we'll be focusing on multiple linear regression or MLR MLR is a method used to model the linear relationship between a dependent variable or a target and one or more independent variables or predictors so the the predictors or the features are independent variables and the, the value that we're trying to guess is called the target or the dependent variable so the idea here is as follows we try to find the equation of the uh, plane or hyperplane that best fits the data remember here we said it's only a simple line so we just find an equation of a line whereas for multiple linear regression by the way multiple linear regression is the case when we have more than one predictor or more than one feature and the idea here is as we said before we're trying to find the equation of that plane that fits the data best and the equation is um, b0 plus b1 x1 b2 x2 plus all the way until bp xp plus a small value of error now these x1 x2 to XP these are our predictors or our features and we want to have a bias term to help us move the plane to the left and to the right as we explained in previous videos so this is the observed data or this is the, re the actual data and for the predicted variable uh, data which is y prime equals b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 all the way to bp xp notice now the difference now is the error so the uh, observed data is the predicted data plus the error so the error value now is the difference between the observed or the actual value and the predicted value always remember if we have p parameters or p predictors or p, p features then we try to guess p plus one p plus one uh, coefficients which are these p's here p zero here as we said is the intercept now more information the multiple linear regression is or the, the most common way of doing it is the ordinary least squares the OLS the model in, in that method the model is fit is fit such in, in such a way that the sum of squares of differences of the observed or the actual data and the predicted values is minimized so what we, what we try to do is we have the actual values and we have the predicted values and we try to minimize the sum of squares of differences between those two values if we try to have a look at these formulas here we're trying to minimize the as you can see here the difference between the actual and predicted y minus y prime square that get the summation we try to minimize that value now if you see these here this is in matrix form and the idea behind using matrix form it makes multiplications much much more much more easier much more easy and at the same time uh, it saves us space now, so what we're trying to do now and all these are matrices wh what we're trying to do now is trying to find this vector or this array of coefficients p and the way we do it is we find the covariance matrix between the input variables and the uh, 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 the predicted variable which is y and then we find the covariance matrix of the input va variables themselves uh, let's call the covariance matrix of the input variables CXX and let's call the covariance matrix between the input variables and the output variable CYX then what we do is we multiply CXX uh, minus 1 which is the inverse of CXX we multiply the inverse of CXS XX by the matrix covariance matrix CYX that gives us the um, array oh, I'm sorry it gives us the array of the coefficients then we find the uh, matrix of oh, I'm sorry the array of the output values now or the predicted values now is B we multiply it by <coughs> the matrix of the input variable
variables and notice now the actual value as we mentioned before is the predicted plus the amount of error if that and this is just a, a slightly more detailed explanation of this but the idea as we mentioned is just computing the these two covariance matrix matrices and then do the multiplication if that confuses you then let's have a look at a simple example here let's say we have this data set we have x1 x2 x3 so three input variables and these are their values and then the output variable is y now if you look at these uh, um, uh, matrices y equals y1 y2 all the way to yn so we have n points one two three all the way we have n is the number of points and x now the matrix of the input variables x, variable x looks as follows we have x11 x12 x13 all the way to x1p x21 x22 all the way to x2p and so on and so forth what that means is we have p input variables so the number of input variables here is three that means p equals three so p is the number of input variables and n is the number of points or number of instances in our data and then that's the array of the uh, coefficients b1 b2 all the way to bn <coughs> and for the error it looks like that and then we just build that those matrices don't worry about this the uh, x1 transpose x2 transpose we build these matrices and then we just plug them in the, in here to find the uh, values for the coefficients now the multiple linear regression model is based on several assumptions for example errors are normally distributed with zero mean and constant variance provided that the assumptions are satisfied the regression estimators are optimal in the sense that they are unbiased efficient and consistent these estimators are the values for the coefficients unbiased means that the expected value of the estimator is equal to the true value of the parameter efficient means that the estimator has a smaller variance than any other estimator consistent means that the bias and the variance of the estimator approach zero as the sample size approaches infinity just some properties here of MLR now to judge how good a model is let's say we have found the uh, uh, the parameters now and we know the model as we said the model is just finding the the equation now and find the value values of the parameters to judge how a good a model is we can use r squared which is also called as the coefficient of determination by the way i have a tutorial on data exploration and analysis in there i explained r square and some other techniques you can have a look at those videos i have i think that series has uh, 10 videos so r squared summarizes the exploratory power of the regression model and is computed from the sums of squares terms so the coefficient of determination r square equals ssr plus over sst or 1 minus sse over sst well what are these ssr sst and sse simply sst is the sum of squares total and that's how we compute it we find uh, the mean of the output variable from the actual data and then we just subtract it from the actual value and square that's how to find SST SSR works in a similar way but now for the predicted variable and the sum of squares errors the different the, the squared value of the squared uh, the sum of squared differences as we mentioned before so the actual minus the predicted we square that and get the sum I hope this makes sense we just find the mean for the actual output and for the predicted output and plug the values the values here um, <coughs> so the R squared it describes the proportion of variance of the dependent variable explained by the regression, the regression model if the regression model is perfect then SSE is 0 and R squared is 1 so SSE will be 0 if the uh, model is perfect there's no error as you can see the value of the error will be 0 that's why it says the value of R squared will be 1 if the regression model is a total failure then SSE is equal to SST so SSE will be the same as SST and the value of R squared will be 0 sorry and the value of R squared will be 0 it's important to keep in mind that there is no direct relationship between high R squared and causation the next
first thing that we wanted to uh, uh, explain in this video is that how do we judge how significant a, mod a model is so here we just try to uh, sort of quantify how good a model is now how do we judge how significant a model is well we can compute the F ratio the F ratio estimates the statistical significance of the regression model and is computed from the mean square terms in the ANOVA table. Again, in my um, data exploration, exploration and analysis tutorial, I talk about the ANOVA test. The significance of the F, F ratio uh, is obtained by referring to the F distri distribution table using two degrees of freedom, DFMSR and DFMSE. Uh, MSE is the mean squared error and MSR is the uh, mean squared regression. P now is the number of independent variables. Uh, for example, P is 1 for the simple linear regression. As we mentioned before, that if the number of variable, variables is 1, then it's simple linear regression. And that's how we compute the F ratio. F ratio equals MSR over MSE. MSR is, uh, as we mentioned, the uh, mean square for regression and the MSE is the mean squared error and we have these degrees of freedom. I hope that makes sense. It's quite easy to plug the values. Now, why do we use the F ratio? Well, the advantage of the F ratio over R squared is that the F ratio incorporates sample size and number of predictors in the assessment of significance of the regression, regression model. A model can have a high R squared, but still uh, not be statistically significant. That's why using the F ratio is advantageous. Now, I'm going to stop here. In the next video, I'll continue explaining um, a couple more things regarding multiple linear regression. And then if we have enough time, then we'll have a look at an example. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.